Welcome to the very first Evan and Kaylin podcast ever! In our new house! <laughs> <laughs> I always cut you off right when I end the effects. Rude. And then now you turn it back on when I don't even have anything cool to say? <laughs> How about we are in a new house? I already said that. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so I think that right off the bat, let's hit one of the very most asked questions. How is Jube? Jube is doing good. I'm happy to report because that was probably one of the things stressing me out the most about the upcoming move. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to the story of the move and everything that happened <laughs> and, and all of that. But we wanted to right up front say Jube is doing very well. She enjoys the new house. She enjoys the new house. Yeah. She's still getting used to it, I think, because... Mm -hmm. You know, there's still boxes everywhere <laughs> and like not all the usual stuff has been unpacked. Although she does love the boxes, yeah. not as much go crawling into them more, just like the tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're often woken up by Jube chewing on tape somewhere. Well, I also think right off the bat, I think the, the biggest question that I have for you after all of the stress of looking after all of the, the like work that we put into this, the late nights, everything, was it worth it? Oh, yes. 100%. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So yes. worth it. I am, I'm, I'll just speak for myself, but I am so incredibly happy to yeah. be here at this new place with more space. Like, we are in a whole room for streaming and podcasting. A whole room a for whole it. A whole room. We don't have to combine it with the office anymore. Yeah, we can set up lighting and green screen even better. We can, like, try new formats. It's, it's so nice. It's, yeah. I'm just so happy to be here. It's great for us personally. It's great for our business. Mm -hmm. Like so. Also, so. it's just like a huge to do kind of in a way that's mm -hmm. been weighing on us for, mm -hmm. I mean, very heavily for all of this year basically because yeah. we started um, looking in early February at but houses. I, but I think even earlier than even that. earlier because we knew we've known for a couple years that we got to move. Yeah. We can't keep like running the business the way we want to run it in the small house like our personal yeah. space was fine but the business stuff was taking over all of the like personal spaces yeah. going back a little bit when was the first time that you knew that we needed to move like when, when you really started to feel it um i think a big part of it also is it like a it, it might be a little echoey in here it might be a little might echoey a little yeah i mean you know we're, we're still working on the setup. this setup this is house. early stages it's just gonna get better from here yeah but i think one of the first times was when we made over our garage mm -hmm. and we ended up putting a bunch of stuff that couldn't fit into the garage in the breakfast nook. And then we made over the breakfast nook and we put all that stuff into the guest room. And then we made over the guest room and we put all that stuff back in the breakfast nook. And like, there was just like a series of makeover room makeover projects over a year, year and a half where we were always shuffling just a bunch of stuff and some of it we probably could have gotten rid of if we had had the time to go through it but a lot of it is like tools and camera equipment and stuff like that that we couldn't necessarily just get rid of there was just no space to store it yeah. it never had a dedicated space it ultimately ended up in the room of shame aka the <laughs> guest room which you guys have seen on the house tour and yeah. various other stuff but i think that was kind of the start of it when it was like yay we're gonna do a room makeover and get our organization so much better but then like we literally couldn't do that without completely destroying another room yeah already you know? here as we've been like moving in and unpacking it's been so nice just having like space to put things you yeah. know and i'm like oh wow yeah. i'm just so grateful to have a little bit of spare space you know it may eventually all get taken up but for now it's amazing i think for me when i first knew that we needed to move and when it started building inside of me more and more was when we first built the very desk that we are at mm-hmm um, the, the rainbow LED resin, resin streaming desk. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and I think, I guess when we first started the whole podcast setup, you know, oh, and like yeah. we started adding more and more things to that office room and it started getting more and more crowded and I'd be like on my back working on something, trying to like go back and forth between the two desks. And I'd always have to like squish you into our like desk. Caitlin Just to like, get past oh! me. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like pushing like 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 
trapping you against that desk to like go back and forth again and again and again and again yeah. while I grab this cable or whatever. And it's, it's, um, I think that from that point onwards, as I kept on adding more and more stuff to this desk that we're at right now, <laughs> it just got bigger and bigger. <laughs> and like, I felt more and more trapped there. Yeah. And I think that's when I was like, oh, we need to move soon. And so that was, wh how long ago was that? that a was couple years like ago. Two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. It's been building for a couple of years. Yeah. So let, let's get, to, let's go, go on to the move. So yeah. Um, we hired help, which was the best decision ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quick question um, for context. Uh, do you think that we'll release this podcast before or after moving vlog part two? I think right after moving vlog part two. Okay. So yeah. they will have seen some of it so we can like yeah. refer to stuff. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let, let's refer to all of it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Just want to keep things straight. <laughs> um, like it's, uh, we're trying to record things the best we can, but we mm. also like are having a hard time keeping track of like what Patreon knows and like we're, we're super behind on posting you know and so everything has just been a little extra crazy it's all just gonna get mixed you know and yeah. I, it's interesting I, I do sometimes think like wow we're putting out so many con so much content in so many places like what are we doing sometimes but yeah like what are we doing where what have we said where <laughs> What have we just <clears throat> said to each other many times? But we Let's just actually... say it all right now. Cool. And if we're saying things again. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how the move went. Yeah. Like you said, we hired help. This was mm. our first uh, like grown up move, I think, <laughs> because before we had moved from apartment to apartment. Mm -hmm or from apartment to house. Yes. And so we were only ever dealing with an apartment's worth of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And in our past moves, we weren't working from home mm -hmm. in this like capacity like we are now, where there's a lot of work stuff. When also, when I think it's interesting, when you're at an apartment, we didn't mount anything to the walls really, right? No, you, we did, like, like, we you did, can't. We did a few nails and we patched it with like toothpaste. Yes. But like, that's like all we did. We just put a few nails in and when we moved, we took the nails out and put toothpaste on it and we're like, yeah. we're done, we're ready to move. Yeah, we <laughs> had like friends help us move some mm -hmm. of the big pieces in their trucks, took everyone out for yep. like beer and pizza. And as pretzels. Is tradition. And pretzels. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and pretzels. Big puffy pretzels. Anyways, yeah. um, but the point is like this is, with this move, we like, I don't know. I felt kind of guilty hiring help, which is weird because like we had never done it before. And it's like, no, we can, maybe we can. But I soon got over that when. Was it guilty because you felt guilty spending money or cause. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> as I do, <laughs> but, um, but like we realized just how long that mm -hmm. would take us and it would be so impractical. And also our other moves. I mean, I guess I did. Um, my first move when I moved in with you, it was a few hour drive, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, our move into the old house was just like a 20, 30 minute drive, yeah. uh, you know, and we just have so much more stuff now. It would require so many trips. Like we would have, we would have had to take so much time off of making content and we're already feeling like anxious. I'm like, oh yeah. man, I really want to get back to making stuff. Um, even though we haven't, I mean, we've taken probably the most time off of streaming just cause you know, we only post main channel videos once every two weeks streaming. We would do several times a week. Yeah. So it's, it's had like the biggest noticeable change, but uh, like we didn't want to have to like skip making content e any more than we already are. And that's the main reason why we hired out help to pack and to move. Well, yeah, the, the whole process. I mean, when, when the, when the, the, the people got to our place, it was three days like packing everything in our in our, our house then loading it and then moving three days those three days would have taken us two weeks minimum at least yes i think longer <clears throat> well because also like driving back and forth so many times because like w i can't drive like an 18 wheeler gigantic truck no like that we would have had to like do like four or five or six trips yeah It'd be a lot with a with like a truck. I would feel comfortable driving, and that's just like so inefficient. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. It. It. Yeah. Yeah. It just would have taken too long. And plus, yeah. um, we also we didn't put our old house on the market. It's you know we wanted to wait until after we got fully moved out, just because 
it was so overpacked with our stuff. We didn't think it would show well with all of our stuff in there. And so we also didn't want to put that off indefinitely because, um, you know, spring is like the best time to buy, um, in summer and we don't want to have to like, Oh, what if that, what if it doesn't get to go on the market until like late summer? Because like we hit all these crazy delays or whatever. I don't know. Well, one thing I think I'm, I'm going to, I'm, 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 I, I could just see us jumping all over in this podcast. Yeah, let's just jump around here. today. Let's just jump around. Okay. <clears throat> one thing I wanted to talk about that that made me think of is how fortuitous the timing of all of this was, guys. Like you saw in the vlogs how we got the house on the very last day of the contract. Yep. One thing we didn't like cover just because there's, there's so much that goes into buying a house is like we... It would have been harder for us to afford this house that we moved into if our taxes hadn't have been filed. Yeah, that's true. We had you to know, like kind like, of rush yeah. to file our taxes this year. Yeah, and 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 like we because YouTube income is like it's not like a steady, stable salary. Yeah, so know? the bank wants to see like our our, our tax records because they don't trust us. <laughs> you know, we're just like we're just YouTubers. What the heck are those? <clears throat> and <laughs> and so like we filed our taxes and then submitted it and then like got approval. Then we bought the house. Like it was like, boom, 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 boom. Like everything was stacked right next to each other with like zero wiggle room. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm just so glad. Even things like, like we saw this house mm -hmm. within a couple days of it coming onto the market, we put in an offer like within 24 hours of seeing it, like everything has been like without wiggle room. Yeah. Oh, you know, let's, let's go back even farther. Let's talk about the visit to, to this house. Oh yeah. And like what we thought of it. Yeah. Cause like we, we, okay, we, we yeah. saw like 40 houses, like no joke um, in person. And then we also saw like a bajillion houses online. And I think that <laughs> when, <clears throat> when, when we saw this house, I was actually like in my head, I was thinking about the next house that we were going to see. Cause I was excited about that. And the whole reason why we took the trip out to this area was to see another house. house. And and like the first house we saw that day was such a disappointment. No, this was the first house. Oh, this was? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm getting it all mixed up. So our final trip (laughs) to the area to check out houses, there was three that we were going to see. We made the trip for this one that was in like a really great area. And it seemed to have like all the like check boxes ticked and it Mm -hmm. was like like it seemed to be on the low side price wise for what it was so there's like all these things aligning, and we're like oh my gosh we got to get into that house and there was a super super rush because there's so many listings book booked our realtor or like the the realtor uh the listing agent would only give us 30 minutes in the house usually you get an hour but they were having so many people only got 30 minutes and on that day too when we saw that house there was already offers on the table there's yeah there's already offers on the table so we were like okay we had just like literally just come back from a trip to see houses but and then this one popped up and we were like we gotta go so we we planned the whole trip around this one house um the house we ended up buying had also recently come onto the market and there was another house that had recently come onto the market that was very different that was a little bit more of like a fixer upper yeah fixer but had more Mm -hmm. land Mm -hmm. and so we came to the house we bought first and we almost didn't see this house we so almost didn't see this house yeah it was like such a like close call of not even seeing it yeah and that scares me (laughs) i know but i was like i think i i really like this one online because i had seen one by the same builder that or, or something that had like some similar features that was like a coming soon like mm-hmm. it hadn't been built yet and i remember thinking oh man it's too bad that that one's not built yet um so then when this one popped up i had already kind of had a very similar house in mind i was like evan we should like just throw this one in because it you know it popped up um but uh so we came to this one first and i was kind of like Hey, what do you think? It's pretty nice. Caitlin was like pushing this house. I was like, this one's pretty nice, right? What do you think? And after every house we visited, we recorded like on the car drive to the next house, just a quick little video of our thoughts. Um, And at every house, we also recorded like pictures and videos. And this is all like for ourselves, for for reference, because Mm -hmm. um, when you're seeing 40 houses, like things really blur together and it's nice to go back and be like, what was our first impression or nice to go back and refer to videos. But like with this one, 
I could tell Evan was so not into it. I oh, took I'm one photo. I took one photo, and you didn't take any videos. I didn't take any videos. And then on the on the um like video drive, <laughs> like you were kind of like, oh, you know. <laughs> and then we went to the next house that was the next house was the one that we had made the trip out to see, mm-hmm. and it was a hot mess utter disappointment utter disappointment like just one of those things where it looks great in pictures but so much in person was just really shoddy like really not well built Mm -hmm. um and you like like water damage that was hidden and just lots of weird things lots of weird like the drainage of the house was right pipes and you know foundation issues and a lot of things like recently painted over and i was like there's so much like weird patchy fresh yeah. paint what are you hiding yeah what's going on and there? there's so much that we could see there's like patches in the floors and like a dehumidifier running and we were like this i don't know like it looks it looked nice on the surface but and um we were like you know maybe there's a reason why it was so cheap for what it was um and then we went to the fixer upper house and I was you were so gung-ho gung about the fixer upper. I was like gung ho. I don't know I don't know why. I think I I think honestly at that point I was like we need we need to move soon. Yeah. I'm fatiguing and I, I was just kind of getting excited about various aspects of that house. Yeah. Um but but then you know I I think this is one of the reasons why it's so good to have a really knowledgeable local um real estate agent Mm -hmm. and we had the best real estate agent ever um and and our real estate agent was like guys you know let me make some calls around to other realtors in this area that know this area know this house and and how easy would it be for us to sell this house again if you ever needed to move in the future Mm -hmm. and i think that in the end that was one of the biggest things that put us off because even though it was somewhat appealing for us Mm -hmm. we would have to put so much money into fixing it up that it, it would, would have be been overvalued. really hard to sell. It would be sell. really hard to sell. And I think it would have been a not the best financial decision. Yeah. And it, it would have mm. it would have been years of fixing it up. Years of fixing and it up. And even yeah. though it's like, yeah, we can turn it into content, we you know, we don't want to have to have every single video be fixing up a house. Sometimes fixing up a house stuff is really fun and exciting. Mm. And sometimes it's just like new plumbing you know what i mean and like you can't make a great video out of that but you still got to do the work and sometimes we just want to do like an art project or a science experiment (laughs) you know i think i think that's that's a fun side tangent to go down on because that's something we kind of went back and forth on a lot and i think that if we hadn't have so urgently needed to to move and if we had have been closer to where we were moving i think that i would have been much more open to a fixer-upper if we could have like you know, lived at one house while we, while we, well, fixed we did up a lot the of other. the bones yes. type stuff. Yeah, yeah. But like we so urgently needed to move. We were like bursting at the seams and we wanted to get to a, a new, like, there's also pressure of like the interest rate is super, super low yeah. and the market's super competitive Yeah, right now. All of that. Yeah. So I, I think that I'm really in the end, the side tangent of like fixer upper versus more like finished house we can just move into set up all mm-hmm. of our lights and just get going and that's not to say we right won't away. like change up some rooms or yeah. customize them or whatever but it's like not as urgent it's like uh you know oftentimes with the fixer upper there's so much you have to do before you can even move your stuff in you know like if you're gonna do the floors if you're gonna like repaint the whole house if you're gonna you know, if you have to scrape off popcorn walls, like we learned so many things with our first house. Or knock down a wall. Or, or knock down a wall. Work. All yeah. of which we were thinking about doing at that fixer mm-hmm. upper. Mm-hmm. And so it was interesting because like, like, I think you were like ready to make an offer on the fixer upper. Because it did have some awesome Looking stuff. Looking back, I, I'm scared of myself. <laughs> you were so ready. And I was like a little bit hesitant. And I was like, what about that the first house that we saw? You know, that was like pretty nice. You yeah. Know? Um, and then once we heard from our realtor like with the amount of money you'd have to put into it like you never get that back selling it caitlin brought us this house again then evan was like so caitlin what about the first house let's put an offer on the first house and i was like wait i've been trying to convince you all day for the first house and now you're like you're you're like good to go like you're ready like what (laughs) and then i got really hesitant (laughs) (laughs) caitlin was like like the first house first house first house and i'm like but the third house third house third house and i was like actually first house let's do it and caitlin's like wait what stop (laughs) i'm like wait have you thought this through (laughs) (laughs) and i mean i I guess yeah maybe it was kind of silly for me to to like be so hesitant but it's a big purchase and like i want to make sure that we're both 
you know, we, yeah. we both wanted to be both fully on board mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. we put in an offer. And, and you know, I think decision. that like in the end, because the market was so hot, because more offers were probably <laughs> going to be put in on this house soon. And we wanted to get in and just lock it down. Yeah. We just like put in the offer right then. We just like literally did it. right before we drove and home. We, we'd only seen this house once for a very short amount of time. We didn't Every have any pictures, no media, no yep. thoughts captured on it. And we just did it. Yep. Yeah. Every other other house that we had like considered putting in an offer, we saw twice. Yeah. Except for this one. Except for this one. The only house we didn't see twice was the house that we bought. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I remember we we put in the offer and then immediate basically immediately had to drive home because yeah. we mm -hmm. needed to get home that night to we, do some stuff for a video. We had like my little baby computer and we had a hotspot. And I remember we had to like stop at the side of like some gas station, pull in, activate a hotspot, get on the little baby computer and like fill out forms and sign things and send them off and yeah, everything. Yeah, as we were driving because it, it was so rushed. We and had then, to like, like get offer in that night. How much do you want to talk about that drive? Are you okay talking about it? I'll, I'll talk about it. I had a little <laughs> bit of a panic attack. Uh, I, I, I don't know if that's for sure what it was because I haven't had a panic attack before. I think it was but for the next attack, like 24 yeah. hours, just because... You know, this this house is significantly bigger than our last house, mm -hmm. which was very much a, you know, a starter home and a much newer house. And, you know, because of these factors, it was much more expensive than our first house. And like I, you know, tend to be the more nervous person one between the two of us about spending money and like because everything happened so fast and it was this like very big purchase i just started having a little bit of a panic attack on the drive home and evan kept trying to do these calculations <laughs> to try to make me feel better like all this math in my head and math. everything and he was like well if you if you look at it this way and you you take out the principal because you get the principal back when you sell it and you're just looking at like the interest and the property tax and this and that it's actually only this much more per month and i was like is this much more <laughs> per month oh my god <laughs> um but yeah so i i had about 24 Four hours of freaking out and, but then well i think that what one one thing that that ended up actually helping is we we looked at houses that would have been good for like just us living in mo more in this area that we wanted to move to and just us as in if we didn't have a business if we didn't have a business and then mm -hmm. like how much would like workshop space be so mm -hmm. like it, like because because the amount of space we need for work has grown mm -hmm. and we, we we just want more space to film to make content to to do more new things <clears throat> and the only way to get that is to either get a bigger house or to get a workshop space mm -hmm. and we like looked a up rented, like a rented a rented one yeah space. <clears throat> and then we looked <clears throat> up how much it would be like per square feet and how many square feet of workshop space would need and if we did if we did it outside we need workshop and office nearby like combo and we looked at how much that would be per month and that much per month would be about as much of an increase in monthly costs yeah <clears throat> as we were paying an increased monthly cost by getting you know this house yeah so i do think that that's one of the things that made me feel a lot better because it's like the whole you know one of the biggest reasons not the whole reason but one of the biggest reasons that spurred our thoughts of moving is that we need more business space and so you got to get it one way or another mm -hmm. and we would rather work from home should we should we give you a preview now of what business spaces we're going to have at the new place yeah we can yeah, talk yeah. about it <clears throat> okay so right now we are in a room for um just just all like various sorts of content creation but this is like um the the streaming podcast room mm -hmm. we have lights we have the green screen we have all sorts of equipment and we're also going to turn this closet off to the side into a server room finally yeah then we have a whole arts and crafts room where we're like it's an alternate set and we're going to be able to stream arts and crafts there and yeah. then we have Oh yeah, I was just, I don't know what I was gonna add. <laughs> Keep going. And then we're gonna have an actual office that's just an office. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm pretty pretty excited for that. Yeah, because fitting the two big desks and all the other like normal office-y type mm -hmm. stuff that we mm -hmm. need is we learned a lot to fit in with the streaming desk, streaming slash podcast desk and all the streaming slash podcast stuff we need. So 
yeah, a dedicated, just normal working office. Mm. And, and it then, can be pretty course, for Caitlin. And it can be pretty. Because, <laughs> like, I, I, like, Caitlin does want to, and, and can make an office really pretty. But then I keep on adding, like, lights and green screens and all sorts of other things for the, for the streaming. And it just isn't fully no, we possible. Can have it separate. No, we can have it separate. But I think the biggest thing is, like, the space. Too. the space yeah um, and then the garage yeah, workshop yeah, yeah the garage workshop yeah. so instead of having the two like workspaces now we have four workspaces yeah and i think that's that's going to allow us to, to do a lot of good mm -hmm. things and get more efficient and up the quality of a lot of things and it's just it's so much nicer for us not to be so, so cramped because yeah. most of the stuff we do in our house is work mm. yeah. <laughs> like related stuff so nice to have the workspaces be a little bit more and we can have out. natural light in our office i know i'm so that's one of the biggest reasons i'm excited <clears throat> that in the space having the um office and the streaming room split because mm -hmm. the streaming room you gotta keep it darker um, yeah, I, I, we have a moving blanket over here covering, covering the, window, the window right <laughs> it's just like a moving blanket you know <laughs> It's a nice moving blanket. It's a nice it uh, kind of matches navy the blue. wall yeah. color. Yeah, yeah, it's navy, and it's a navy room. Yeah. Um. But yeah, th those are the new spaces in our 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 new house, um, and I think that it's interesting. Most of the space we added when we moved from our old house to our new house, it's all workspaces. The mm -hmm. number of rooms we have for like personal hasn't actually gone up. Yeah, it's like the the rooms are maybe slightly bigger. Yeah. Just because as you, you know, we needed a bigger house to get these additional rooms for the work stuff. And usually when you get a bigger house, the rooms themselves get a little bit bigger too. Yeah. But yeah, the like personal space hasn't really increased that much. Because <laughs> like, it's not like we're, we're, we took up a, I don't know, a new personal hobby or something. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the, the personal hobbies are all work hobbies. Yeah, exactly. You can double dip. <laughs> um, okay. So, so we talked about the house. We talked about like the, like barely visiting and buying at last minute and everything and then once we put in the offer on the house that's when things started really getting real and mm -hmm. i think that was everything covered in the moving vlog part one i think we kind of captured all of the drama of that in that video pretty well like yeah like the, the going back and forth on if we were going to get it and yeah well like, the funny <clears throat> one funny thing and i think we talked about this in the patreon after show for that video um but uh because everything was so last minute we didn't think when we signed for the house we didn't think we'd actually get to go into the house we didn't think we'd get our keys mm. because like the mm. funds weren't supposed to be like be transferred because yeah. it was like so late in the day and this and that um and we were uh we were staying with family and so we were driving back to their house when we got a call from our realtor um or a text saying that the funds had actually <laughs> transferred and and uh we could go to the house and so we were like <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we went and laid down on the floors <laughs> but yeah, we but, didn't think we'd get to do that yeah i'm, I'm glad that we got to have like a strong positive ending there instead of like <laughs> I, I don't know what we would have done otherwise i don't I know, know. we know, didn't fully have out. a plan yeah yeah for sure <clears throat> yeah okay <clears throat> so then so then we hired help which was so great mm -hmm. um and i think that on the packing oh no no well, 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 before we even get to the the help we hired we did a lot to the house. Oh yeah, some of it's covered in the vlog, mostly in like time lapse form. Mm -hmm. um, but there was just so much that we had done to the house and attached to the house, or things like the editing and streaming desks that we had built in the room that couldn't be removed from the room unless we disassembled them. Um, so there's so much prep work, like pulling over some stuff that wasn't even captured. Like we um, had to pull everything out of the attic yeah like break down our storage shelves and take all the stuff we had stored up there um just so many things so many things in the garage that like <laughs> i think the movers were like you guys are taking that and that and you're taking the shelves <laughs> and you're, you're not leaving the cabinets you're taking the cabinets we're like, we need them we need all we of need it them Thank immediately you. <laughs> um so um there's just so much breaking down and i think even the movers were like well like, they were like oh thank you guys for like help uh, helping to like break the stuff down because we were in there with like screwdrivers like as they were you know they would load some tools into a box and we'd like immediately take down the pegboards mm -hmm. and stuff um just because there's there's just so much to undo yeah 
moving um, tip if you're ever moving it was so nice like before the movers got there we packed everything we needed for an entire week and set it off to the side and also i kept all of my tools like my most used tools yes. like my my uh you know the the power screwdriver all the bits and then like a, a tool kit that i i always keep that's my, my grab go bag mm -hmm. with like you know a, a, a manual screwdriver with all the bits um a selection of wrenches that i really like um that can grip a various number of things we should do a, a blog post that's of, like what's in evan's like tool go bag yeah yeah. Um, Hex wrenches and all, it's all the things anyways. Yeah. But yeah, I think that was like such a big thing. Um, cause we had like, I remember talking to your mom before the movers got here and we were like, what tips do you have? Um, and, uh, I just remember her talking about how like crazy the packing day is because you'll be like, Oh wait, no, don't pack that. I need that. Ah, this, ah, that. And so we spent a lot of time. This is why we were up till 3am like the night before they got here. And again later, but, um, because we, um, one, we had to finish like breaking down and dismounting stuff from the house, but also prepping the stuff that we would need immediately. And so, um, in terms of tips, I think the tool bag, great tip. Great tip. I think also things that like, you might not think about, like I packed a bunch of night lights because yeah. when you're at a new house and there's like boxes everywhere, like and if you have to like get up in the middle of the night, you probably can tell me like, you're going to stub a toe guaranteed, you know? So we brought night lights, um, box cutters, uh, cause you're going to be like mm -hmm. opening a lot of boxes, sharpies, sharpies, sharpies and printer paper just to like, cause you might need it. And blue, blue tape, tape. Yeah. You know, bonus like, is gaffer's tape. Not, not as necessary. I just, just get like blue gaffer's tape. tape. Just get blue tape. Blue tape is fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the tools, the like, uh, I mean, for us, we had some computer and camera mm -hmm. type stuff. Yeah. Um, we had bought just several additional clear bins mm -hmm. from, from like the hardware store just to have, uh, some stuff, just open bins that we could like put stuff in last minute if mm -hmm. we needed, you know, and clear plastic bins are so clear, nice. clear because you, you can, can like find them. stuff again really easily. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other. I mean, obvious stuff like, you know, we like packed bags and toiletries and stuff like that for a week. Um, you know, because of Jube, we had, you know, both oh, yeah. her cat food types mm -hmm. and litter and she has two boxes. So we had one of her boxes and like yeah. a dust pan, mm -hmm. you know, to like clean stuff and the like cleaning spray. We had yeah. cleaning spray um, all in our like stuff we'll need for the first week. Towels. Yeah, like, towels. Like bath towels, mm -hmm. you know, because like. What if you get to your new house, you got to take a shower and you have no towels. Like, then you don't you're know sad. Where they are. Then, then you're, you're just sad. sad. <laughs> you know? Um, so we really thought through, and it's not the same as thinking through like what you need going on vacation or something. Mm -hmm. um, because that's just like your clothes and your toiletries and any, you know, stuff specific to like where you're going. Yeah. But the type of like normal life stuff, like, towels and cleaning supplies and box cutters one thing that you missed that you would have loved is if you had have had everything for coffee and like yeah. a special box well, set and aside the thing is, i was like <laughs> i was that the, the day they got here i was like evan do you think i should is would it be overkill to pack my like my coffee maker <laughs> and some of my coffee stuff but we we had so much stuff in our like we do not pack room mm -hmm. we basically taped off the treadmill room um, because that was the room that was easiest to move things out of and turn that into our do not pack zone. We had so much stuff in there the day they got here. We <laughs> knew it couldn't fit in the car. Yeah. And so we we're like, no, 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 we can't, we can't. But I do wish that I had done it. But luckily I borrowed some from our family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out. Yeah. yeah. But that would that was, that was a close call. That was a close call. That was a close call. <clears throat> yeah. And then, um, oh, oh, one, one thing that like didn't fully get covered in the, uh, the vlogs is the whole garage floor. Oh, I'm not sure yeah. how we're going to stitch that together. We're recording this before Caitlin's edited. I haven't vlog edited part two. Yeah. moving vlog part two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the main, really the only work we did on the new house before moving there is, um, epoxying the garage floor mm -hmm. because we knew that once our stuff in, is in there, we just won't do it. Like we know from experience, we know from experience <laughs> because we always wanted to do that to our old workshop. And we never did because like, you have to have your stuff out of the garage for like several days, mm -hmm. maybe more if it's humid 
And so much of our stuff cannot fit into the house. It's, you know, we don't have a normal garage's worth of stuff. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot of tools that we don't want to get out in the humidity or rain rusting. Um, and so we had that done beforehand, but of course it was very humid. It was supposed to be raining like the whole week and it did rain on our packing day. Um, and like every day leading up to the packing day. And so <laughs> the, the floor people were like, yeah, we should be able to get it done. We should be able to get it done. Um, and, uh, but then as it got closer, it was like, it was too humid and it was raining and because the floors like extended out past where the garage doors close like that area was going to get wet so it was like they couldn't do the whole floor and have that area be exposed to the weather and so we had to like last minute be like okay just do everything but that little lip mm -hmm. that goes out and just we'll we'll do that later um but then it was still super tight and when we got there when we got to the new house um because Day one was packing. Day two was like loading the truck and driving over. Originally, we didn't think we would drive until day three, but we drove night, the night of day two. And so um, we like went to the garage and we poked it with our fingernail and you could still indent yeah. it. And we and were like, oh no. We, we know what that means. We, we, yeah, know we know that it's not fully cured yet. You know, like it, it shouldn't be able to be dentable with that amount of pressure. And we knew if we moved everything onto it just straight up with the rollers and the harsh edges of the metal things and all the stuff we're going to be putting on it would end up with like a damaged brand new floor. <laughs> and that would be so sad. And like we didn't have a plan no. until the morning of. And the, the people who did the floor recommended this like <clears throat> stuff called Ram board, which is like a really thick but breathable cardboard product that you can lay out to protect homes and, and everything like that. And like, mm -hmm. I was like driving carefully. To several. Yeah, rapidly. <laughs> to several stores. <laughs> to several stores. While the movers are unloading stuff and we just told them like, hey, do the garage last. But they had yeah. to unload it all into the driveway because they had packed it last. So they had to unload it first. Yeah. And so Evan's like running all around town um, to get this ramble. Like while Caitlin's alone at the, like, the house alone trying to manage house, everything, managing. the move day. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, luckily you got back in time We and we put them on there. And then we, at very last, um, you know, the guys loaded up the garage stuff onto the ram board. Did it work? I don't know. We haven't moved it. So hopefully... Hopefully. What if like we go to like move all of our stuff off the board and like the board's just stuck to the epoxy? I can't think about that. That's not it's not an option. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Let's not think about that. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and, and the reason why it takes so long, like knowing epoxy is because like if you want long working time, it that means long curing time. So basically I mean, I'm not sure what, because there's all sorts of different chemical ways that epoxy can work. Not all epoxy is the same, but generally the more flowable, the more workable, the longer work time you have with it, the longer it takes to cure. So I think that the full cure time for these, this garage floor product is 14 days. <clears throat> you know? We had three. We had three days before we moved on to it, but like it got most of the hardness done in that time and it had formed a nice top coat. And, and everything like that so so hopefully when we start out of the garage and can move things we it's fine it's fine i'm sure it's hopefully fine. it's fine <laughs> yeah. um yeah so i think i think that that was a lot of the behind the scenes that wasn't covered in the vlogs but or it might have just been covered briefly yeah like we're just, like we said we're not sure it hasn't been edited yet yeah but um you know i think overall the move went pretty pretty well jube handled the, the drive really well she didn't oh yeah she, she didn't like the braking she didn't mind the acceler she didn't like the braking she didn't mind the acceleration and she was fine when we were going the same speed yeah but she just didn't like anything that disturbed her yeah but she she did surprisingly good like we got that soft-sided carrier which i think helped a lot because she already associated it with naps because mm -hmm. we had left it out for her to nap in um because it doesn't seem like a carrier seems like a duffel bag yeah um and so uh, you know, carrying her out to the car. She was meowing. She didn't like that. Um, and uh, when we first got started driving, because like until you get on a highway, you know, there's always stop and starts and mm -hmm. she didn't like that. But once we were on the highway, like she was kind of just chilling, 
you know, like she was very quiet. We would check on her, you know, she's doing fine. And she would only, if then we would like have to break or something. And she'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like Sorry, it Jill. was more of a meow of protest instead of like, help me. I think. Not that I'm like an expert in interpreting cat signals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was just like a little bit of a like annoyed slash kind of upset meow yeah. when we would break. But then we keep going and she was fine. And, um, you know, we got to the new house that night and we um, had decided that when the movers were at the new house, we would set her up in one of the smaller like bedroom bathrooms because like bathroom and closets because the bathroom and closet were um, together. So you could close off one door and she would have a decent amount of space, much more than at the old house where we put her in Evan's closet. Um, just cause we, like there were no rooms with doors that were bigger than that, that we could empty out mm -hmm. to like yeah. keep movers out of it. Everything had really big pieces that we needed the movers help with. And we couldn't, we couldn't, you know, the, because there's no wiggle room in the house, emptying any one of those rooms would have made another room unwalkable. Yeah. And so <laughs> we felt bad, but we had to put her in the closet at the old house. And she, that was her least favorite was, was being the in the favorite, closet. Yeah. And we would like visit her and she should not want to be in that little <laughs> closet. Um, but once we got here, she had the whole like bedroom and closet together and into that room. There were, were um, one reason we chose it is because it was on the very edge of the house. But another reason is because there's only a few things that were going to go into that bedroom. And so then once they were done moving stuff into that bedroom, then we opened up the closet and bathroom to that room. And then she had a whole room with a window and some of her familiar stuff. And then she was like, good. She was good. Yeah. She was like, I'm fine. <laughs> Even in the closet, honestly, she was good. We made a little blanket for it for her. Yeah. Like she had more space. She was totally good. Yeah. Um, which is great because she, yeah. she she doesn't face that much change in her life. You we know, didn't we, really know how she would handle it. We she haven't hasn't moved we in have, a long yeah, time. Yeah, she hasn't moved in a long, long time. Like seven years? Yeah, a long know, time. Yeah, a long time. <clears throat> so um, sweet. And, you know, she's 11 years old. She's not a young kitten. <laughs> um, so, you know, we were kind of worried about the stress of it on her. But um, it, it was also surprising how well she did at the old house, like when the movers, cause you know, once the movers were done for the day, mm -hmm. we obviously like open up the closet, let her explore. But when everything was packed up into boxes, she was like having a blast yeah, yeah. exploring everything and smelling everything. And so, uh, the empty house didn't bother her really. Um, the house, the, the house with like boxes didn't bother her. It was only when she was in the closet. Restricted. Yeah. <clears throat> But I think that now, like one thing I wanted to do with you is go on a trip down memory lane. Eight years ago, when we when we made our house buying for noobs guide, you know, know. And, and like see how well this this holds up. Because after mm -hmm. buying our first house, we made this guide because we just didn't find many resources that were written. With, for people who were new to buying houses. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember looking up so many, so many things and they were either too vague or like too advanced. Like they would just refer to stuff like pre-approval and assume you knew how to get pre-approved. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. So after, <laughs> oh great. <laughs> the picture choices. <laughs> I can only blame myself. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we went through and we made this guide kind of for ourselves when we did it again, but also to share for anyone else who was buying a new house. So let's see what we wrote. And we'll do our best to describe yeah. things for the people who are just listening, not watching. So step one was titled Cash Monies. Uh, like what, what I love is looking back is like Caitlin put a lot of like time, just like we do now. We, she tried to put a lot of time and effort to like make the blog post like fun and interesting and funny. I wanted to like sound like us, like our voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that is a good first step, you know, because because knowing how what your budget is mm -hmm. for the house really like helps define what range of houses you can do. So yeah. step one, cash monies. 
20% down, 10% down, figuring all of that out, talking yeah. to banks and seeing how much you're looking up, for. Uh, looking <clears throat> up um, uh, like utilities cost or talking to family and friends in the area so that you can figure out in addition to your mortgage payment, yeah. you know, there's like the principal and interest, property tax, your homeowner's insurance, but then all the utilities. So calling family and friends in the area or doing research to figure out how much that's going to cost. Yeah. Looking up different HOA fees. Um, you know, there's all these different things to consider that and, 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 might not be obvious if you're new. Yeah, and maybe mortgage insur insurance if you put down less yeah, than twenty percent. You, you might need that. Mm -hmm. I think this 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 part holds up. Yeah, so. I also like the beware of budget creep because <laughs> that's real. <laughs> real big. <laughs> beware of budget creep. After you look at houses, you'll start thinking we can look a little higher than our max budget because we can ar always argue down the price. So your max budget creeps a bit. Then it creeps a bit more and a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I would say all of, I would say that advice about, um, I think the big thing is like kind of breaking down your, your budget into the immediate down payment, but then also the monthly and not forgetting all um, of those things that you may all not those think things about. that add up. Well, especially like if you're going from, uh, from an apartment, to a house and an apartment Which we were when i wrote this yeah that's pretty much like all you need to worry about right and well maybe maybe sometimes utilities maybe some utilities are included in it. you know it yeah. depends on well like so at um at least like my old apartment i remember like part of your apartment bill was your water bill you didn't mm -hmm. have to set that up yourself you just had to get like internet and electricity you know what i mean and then you're good um yeah but then there's also things like you can go down that rabbit hole pretty far. Like, do you want to have like a regular pest control? Do you want to have like regular AC maintenance, you know, like, or if you're doing that yourself, what cost does that add? Like you can go down that right. rabbit hole pretty far. Yeah. <clears throat> Our step two from the past was get a pro, a good realtor. And, and that definitely holds true. Um, yeah. And, and Caitlin wrote, You'll know pretty quickly whether you get a good person vibes or salesman vibes, and you can look up reviews online. And and you know, thankfully for for both purchases, we we knew someone who knew someone or so, someone. We 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 somehow had a semi personal connection to the mm -hmm. realtor, and you know that might not always be the best, but it worked out really well for the two of us. But I think especially the big thing is like if you're new to buying a house and you might not know the right questions to ask or this and that or if you're moving to an area you're not familiar with mm -hmm. um having someone that can help answer those questions is just super yeah. super helpful <clears throat> yeah and also it's like you like <clears throat> you have to balance like you know I, I think a really good realtor will be able to tell you like this is my opinion as a realtor and then like you know but like no realtor really wants to tell you what house to buy because that decision should be your decision, mm -hmm. but like, you know, them being able to give you some guidance on like, whether it's a good deal, how easy is it to resell? If, if you're like, if I bought it at this price and I asked you to resell it in mm -hmm. a year, how easy would it be to sell? Like lots of those questions like that. Those are questions that they can give a better opinion yeah. on. Like, what do you just, think about this area? It's like, Oh no, the sun, there's like a ton of new construction. You don't want to be there. Yeah. Or, or like, yeah. you know, this, you know, they recently blah, 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 you know, whatever it is, they're going to know a lot. Like one of the most helpful things from our realtor this time is we were just like, you know, we, we were looking at a super wide area, like, like probably within a couple hours <laughs> driving circle. We, we were looking at an area bigger than a city. Yeah. Like big, like, like bigger than Houston. We were looking at like a giant area. Yeah. Huge area. And so, you know, we kind of asked about some favorite neighborhoods in the mm -hmm. area that he was familiar with yeah. and that gave us a great starting point. Yeah. So now, um, going back to the list. Oh, getting pre-approved. Yeah. Step three, get it legit pre-approval. Um, I think that that is something that we learned from the first time and yeah. uh, like getting pre-approved before you even start looking at houses, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. then if you want to put in an offer, you already have pre-approval or there's some houses that won't let you see it unless you are pre-approved. Yeah. And also I, I think that, that mm -hmm. for us starting to like choosing the bank, choosing your lender, forming that relationship with them, getting all of those cogs moving. Cause, cause sometimes mm -hmm. you can hit snags like we like did. Like we did. And we, we had started <clears throat> that process 
so a long, long time ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, getting the bank, all of that information and keeping it up to date with them and, and all of that, doing that as soon as possible really it's such helps. a long process. Yeah. If we had have like done it like last minute, like if we hadn't have done it so far in advance, ooh. it would have been so stressful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so getting all your bank stuff figured out. Yeah. <clears throat> and now step four houses look at houses lots and lots and lots and lots of houses <laughs> caitlin wrote this is the super fun part and i think you still really did i like <clears throat> i like i really like looking at houses <laughs> i didn't like having to drive so far to do it this time yeah it was it was a lot of houses so these are some of the things that you wrote down um that you were looking for last time okay price and square feet how many bedrooms well, bathrooms well oh, first yeah. first first let me go back a little bit um, because I have some tips here, pictures and diligent note taking oh, are yes. a great tip because you're not going to remember all the things. And so I remember when we did our first house trip, we even, I had like, like this list we're about to go through. I had, a uh, like a text note on mm -hmm. my phone, um, where I had all these questions written down and then for every house I would answer them. Wow. Wow. I know I was not as organized this time, <laughs> but you know, um, but yeah, so some of the things. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of them. Price and square yeah. feet, bedrooms and bathrooms. Does it have high ceilings? Is there a walk-in pantry? Is the laundry inside or outside? You know. But one thing that's interesting is like as you own one house and then as you see more houses, you start to like think of any more like more questions like like knowing the signs of water damage, knowing the signs of like, you know, has there been any foundation issues? And in multiple houses, I went up into the attic and I looked at what type of insulation they had. I looked at what type of plumbing it was. Like, is it galvanized? Is it PEX? Is it PVC, et cetera, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, it's like, I wouldn't be like asking the realtor like questions about insulation or piping. And they're like, oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like the selling realtor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's just something like, like maybe one tip that I could give is like, if you need to move by a certain point, go ahead and start looking maybe a little bit earlier so you can get some like you know training wheel house looking under your feet maybe because mm. like the more houses you see the the more like balanced it is like because like you know in an area you keep punching <laughs> your mic <laughs> but like in, in each area your, your budget gets you different things and there's different things you have to look out for and, and everything like that if you're able to I if think you're able to yeah you know, depending on the reason people aren't moving, they might not have as much advance notice. Like if you're moving because your job is like, hey, you're going to be moving here. It might be a little bit hard, <laughs> yeah. you know? <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Oh, you're skipping so much. Uh, do you want to hit this? Yeah, because I think <laughs> one of the biggest things um, of things to look at in houses is like being able to distinguish like bones versus like the bones of the house. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Or like the unchangeable things and then the more easily changeable things. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that like holds up, you know, there's some things like the location mm. you obviously can't change the size. I mean, technically maybe in some places you can add an addition, but you can't do too much about that. You know, some of, some of the bones are really would be really hard or expensive mm. to change. Like it's still going to be hard to like make the ceilings taller. You know, yeah. um, but then not getting distracted by things like uh, carpet. bad carpet or mm -hmm. bad paint or like, uh, you know, you don't like the knobs on the cabinets yeah. and stuff like I that. I like how you wrote I think it. that holds up. Back in the day, pay more attention to the bones of the house, not what it's wearing. <laughs> Look at me, my clever writing. Clever writing. Yeah. That's good. Um, I also think that, that another good point that you made back in the day was, price per square foot compared to other houses in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That is a good point. You do not want to be the most expensive house in the neighborhood because the lower the value of the other houses will pull down the value of yours when mm -hmm. it comes time to sell. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, if you're the most expensive house in the neighborhood, it's going to be harder to sell it. Unless you're going to live there forever, but that's not a safe assumption to make all the time. We just always assume we're going to move again because we grew up moving, you know, a yeah. decent amount. So I think that was one thing like, you know, when, when we were moving, I was like, wow, we're finally moving. I thought we would have moved earlier than this or something. We, we, I don't we know. both lived in our last house, you know, the old house longer than either of us had ever lived in a in single any spot. other place. Yeah. In our entire lives. Yeah. And we just assumed we'd move much earlier and we just didn't, you know, just because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think that was a really good point. Um, 
Ooh, this is an, another good point. Um, one last note about house hunting. If you can bring an experienced homeowner with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. We often would bring like one of our parents to come, mm. especially if it was, you know, if it was obvious, no, but if we were going back to the house a second time, because we thought we were going to put an offer on it, both the, on the, our first house hunt. And when we were looking for this house, we would like bring some of our family mm. to, to see, because they always point out stuff that we wouldn't see. Like, I remember my dad pointed out like stuff about like, oh, the drainage around this house is really mm -hmm. bad. Look at yeah. where these, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, you see where these pebbles are. That's, that's like, because one, that's yeah. like a gully. And we're like, oh, we never would have seen that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like people with more life experience, especially like, yeah, bo both of our parents moved so much. They've mm -hmm. both bought so many houses that we did pick up a lot of great knowledge from both of them. Yeah. yeah. And it definitely helps, especially if you're yeah. new. And then step five. An offer they can't refuse, yet any, anyone can refuse any offer for any reason. <laughs> yeah, but I think the biggest tip that holds up from the offer part of it is um, one thing that we we did this on our first house, and we were prepared to do it if needed for this house as well. But if you're in a competitive market, and both the houses we bought had, like our first one had multiple offers on it, um, and this one, there was another offer coming in later on the day that we mm -hmm. were putting in an offer. Um, and there were just so many houses with multiple offers that we had looked at. And so anyways, if it's a competitive market, one thing that I think helps is, you know, you're putting in your offer and you're competing with other people and you might be higher, but you might be lower. I think writing a letter to the seller, introducing yourself, saying why you love the house. Cause this isn't the time to like play hardball. Yeah. You know well, what like, I mean? Especially if, if there are multiple offers. Now, if you're, you're trying to play hardball, don't do this. Yeah, if you're trying to play yeah. hardball, don't do this. But if there's multiple offers saying like, Hey, we're Evan and Caitlin. We love this house. We can't wait to like, how like run our business here. Or like when this first <laughs> house, I was like, we're so excited to be homeowners. And like, we just fell in love with your house and we love it for this reason and this reason and this reason. It's like, then, it's a little bit more personal. It's not just a number. And I don't know if that's the reason we got our first house, but like, I'm sure it helped. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I, I, I would say that holds up in a competitive market if yes. there's multiple <clears throat> offers. Yeah. <clears throat> Step six, apply for a loan. This, this is a lot of work. I gotta say. I don't even want to talk about <clears throat> applying for a loan. <laughs> you have to, but th th it was so much stress. It's so much stress. And, and if you haven't done it before, there's so many confusing aspects to it. I mean, you're handing over all of this information, all of your personal information, all of your tax and everything like that. And then the, like, it's even the harder rate is going you... up and down all the time. And then like there's a point system and oh. Ooh. And when you run your own business, it's even harder because it's like there's so many more documents to like prove that your income is your income. And, you know. Yeah. Um, and like, but before you do that, you might want to work on your credit score because that helps you mm -hmm. with your loan. So there's lots of ways to improve your credit score. We are, can't advise you on any of it, you know, but it's the, the loan is like a big intimidating part that that's important. And it is like, you have to make sure you have enough time in your day, in your schedule to be able to take that off. It took on. us so much time. Like, and it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And phone yeah. calls. And yeah. Oh, and then step seven contract inspection amendments this ended up not being that big of a deal for our current house it went a lot yeah. more smoothly but in our first house we only had a three-week closing and so um we had to uh you know every, every so everything was more rushed so we got our inspection and then there's some really major stuff wrong with the house that the insurance company wouldn't insure us unless we fix the stuff on the house and so we had to like get all these quotes and then argue down the price and this and that in order to get this stuff fixed so that or, or get it all lined up to be fixed because that was the only way that insurance company would insure us i don't remember the exact details but it was like so rushed and so stressful yeah. this time it was, it was like the one <laughs> thing that went more smoothly yeah well and I, like the, the thing that went smoothly last time and this time was closing and, and that, that's an exciting step after you've done, after you have the house inspected, after you've done all of that, then you do the closing and, um, yeah, you're signing a whole bunch of paperwork, but hopefully it's all done. Right. And or we just, that was like, by the time you're there signing stuff, that's easy. That's yeah. Just that's sign. easy. Yeah. You just sign the things you do the things. And then 
you get the house. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> looking at it in list form, it's, it seems a lot less intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, I think that the guide still holds up. It holds up. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's kind of a, a basic guide. It might seem obvious to people who've bought a house before, but I think it holds up. I think it holds up. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm just like so relaxed here in our new place with I like know. more it's just space. Nice to be here. It's, it's it's like also I feel to... like I can stretch a little bit and everything. If we turn off the background so they can see the green screen, do you want to show them? Can we do that for the people watching? Turn turn off the background just to show them the green screen. Is that possible? I can do that. Yeah, just just give me a second. I can just just go to give to... a little preview. I'm sure we'll do it when we do. Ah, oh, that's just a green screen. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. <laughs> but it's in the new house, y'all. <laughs> this this green screen behind us and us we're, are all in the new house. <laughs> it's lit slightly differently. <laughs> and I'm using a new program that's fancy. Anyone just listening won't be able to see this. But look at that. Isn't that fancy? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh we could answer a few of the Patreon questions that were about yeah. houses, like yeah. the house so, stuff. So before we did um, any of the move at all, um, uh, we we asked Patreon for like what they kind of what types of content they wanted to see us make around the move. And there were and, some questions that people asked that you know a lot of the types of content we have encapsulated that and tried to capture that in mm -hmm. uh, the moving vlogs. But some of it I think works better for podcast questions. Yeah. So what we looked for in a house versus what we made compromises on this, this changed so much as the process went mm -hmm. on, like a huge amount to the point where I was like, am I? Yeah. You start questioning everything. Yeah, Like, am I, am I compromising in ways that I shouldn't like, but like at the same time, like as you keep on going through the process, you get more information and you got to trust the current you instead of past you. Mm -hmm. that, that that made those, you know. Well, it's really easy in the beginning when you're just like making your ultimate wish list and you're like, I want all of these things. Yeah. I'm sure I can find it. <laughs> and then you realize that some of the things are in direct competition. Yeah. And even if you had other. an unlimited budget, which no one, no, no, like no one, but like, you know, I don't know. Like the point is, even if yeah. you had an unlimited budget, like you would still have to make compromises yeah. just because of the logistics of like, how cities are set up yeah, and yeah. like where you can build houses. And it's interesting looking back at like, we, we did a, a live stream where we designed our dream house and it was so far from like what would have been good, what we would have wanted uh -huh. and what's possible. Yeah. It was you know, it was like, off. it was very far off. Of what we didn't we find any houses like that. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. But, well, and I think also we, um, you know, the, the, when we did the dream house stream, that was kind of like if we were going to build, um, and we did consider building, mm -hmm. um, especially when we were just having a really hard time finding anything that would work. Um, but ultimately one, well, I mean, it's expensive to buy right now and it's expensive to build right now. So it's mm -hmm. expensive either way, but building is so expensive, but the, um, like more than usual. But I think the biggest thing is because we would be building in a city other than where we were living, that just seemed so intimidating. Mm -hmm. And like, we didn't want to wait another year to two years yeah. while things were being built. Like we wanted to move. I think soon. the biggest thing that changed <laughs> as we kept on looking at houses is our workshop got smaller and smaller. Yeah. And the, 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 the compromise that we did with that is since our workshop got smaller, we, we subdivided and we added like we added like a room to what we were looking for in the house for a like, you know, art workshop studio inside, mm -hmm. because a lot of our projects can be done inside, mm -hmm. like all of the, you know, acrylic pours or, mm -hmm. you know, s s just some of the things that we, we do can be done inside and it doubles as a good streaming place. Yeah. But, and the, <clears throat> one of the reasons that that is kind of what we maybe compromised on, even though it's not, it's kind of like counterintuitive because one of the main reasons we're moving is for business reasons. And then we were kind of sacrificing on a big business thing, but I think it's cause it was also one of the harder things to find. Um, and there's definitely 
places i mean there there are places with workshops but mm -hmm. with the other requirements we had it was hard to meet the other requirements and that that was almost yeah. always like the one thing that was missing okay i'm gonna make a really nerdy analogy because that's who i am <laughs> um but like so you know like people who play like role role playing games and you're on the character creation screen and you like have all those sliders where you can like like increase their height or like, you know, whatever, you know, you're customizing the character. That's kind of like what we were doing for our house. <clears throat> and there's like budget, there's house size, there's workshop size, there's uh, proximity to restaurants and all of that. But like in this, in this, when you slid up like proximity to restaurants, the, the um, house size went smaller and the budget went up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like everything was like linked and you can't just slide everything out to the max because max, one it doesn't exist and then the cost would be like yeah if you exorbitant. want if you want more armor on your character you're gonna lose speed yeah exactly just you're like adding that. weight yeah. yeah you know you have to you have to have a well-balanced character you have to have a well-balanced house <clears throat> be, because that's just how it is those are the rules <laughs> yeah those are the rules <laughs> so i think that like that's one thing that we were struggling a lot with as we looked for at houses like way out in the middle of nowhere and then right in the middle of the city you know like we neither was ideal yeah so we just had to find the right balance with all of it and with be everything. realistic about what yeah we can get. and that made it really hard to look at houses because we weren't comparing apples to apples or even apples to oranges we were comparing like apples to shoes <laughs> you know because the like maybe apples to pastries because you apples can't eat to shoes. broccoli magic broccoli yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Magic broccoli wins. Um, but uh, yeah, it was really hard to compare because it wasn't just like, oh, these two, you know, X amount of bedrooms, X amount of square footage houses in this area. Mm -hmm. Let's compare the two. It was like, it, they were just so different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, there, there are definitely compromises made on all fronts. Mm -hmm. But as... the most surprising one I think was workshop space and yeah. we opted for a really big garage and some indoor space for filming yeah instead of like a really big workshop also one thing that was interesting is we looked at some houses <laughs> and i wouldn't have even expected this at some point but we looked at some houses that really had no yard or an unusable yard for filming and we do a lot of like back backyard experiments sometimes we gotta film in the backyard <laughs> you know, and we gotta do some shenanigans sometimes we're swinging like spike ball chains around and destroying or cokes paint. and or painting or you know whatever and like a lot of the houses didn't have that so <clears throat> i mean you know as we looked we discovered new requirements for what we were doing and everything yeah um so what we were looking for in a house <clears throat> we were so far off in the beginning <laughs> and what we made compromises on everything <laughs> <laughs> but i think that like in the end i'm really glad with how we left the sliders and the right balance mm -hmm. of everything Me um too. Me you too. know so we didn't get everything we wanted but everything we got good enough yeah exactly and like the best balance we could best realistic for. balance and we looked at a lot of houses so we felt pretty confident yeah yeah um yeah, and, after and, and, the panic yeah. attacks yeah. of course <laughs> <laughs> so um next question is how moving has been while working full time and being our own bosses compared to our last move when we were employed. Yeah, that is interesting because in some ways it was harder and in some ways it was much easier. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the ways that was harder is um, we didn't have a separate workspace outside of our house that we could just mm. go to to work that didn't have to be messed up in order to move. So like... Um, you know, if the desks that we had to disassemble weren't being used for work up until like the last couple days before the move, we could have disassembled those super far in advance and wouldn't have had to stay up till 3am. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, or, or like our whole workshop, we could have started breaking that stuff down or, you know, just started the process over a more spread out period of time. If we didn't need to use it up until mm -hmm. the last minute for working, you know, if we had just been going to an office or a separate space that wasn't moving that would have been easier but i think like being able to you know we kind of like front loaded some projects and worked ahead so that we didn't have to take off too much time from our main channel uploads and um we've been able to like put time focusing on 
the move and getting stuff set up like the streaming room and yep. things like that without having to like we we could just decide to stop streaming for yeah. a bit because we needed time to do other things we were know? able to so, like compress mm -hmm. and expand and shift and you know rearrange a lot <laughs> because we are in full control of of everything to some degree yeah and i think also like that led to our decision to hire help because when you're working for yourself any like anything you do it, mm. that is not work is directly taking time away from work you yeah. know and so it it just made it make more sense to hire out moving help because otherwise it would have been taking away even more time from our work yeah you know whereas if you're mm. working a nine to five then your personal time and your work time is separate yeah, yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because I mean, we can like we, we can't hire anyone to make the content that only we can make, but we can hire people to help out with like a move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless we duplicate ourselves. I still need to work on that cloning chamber. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> another question that we got was, did we find anything lost or interesting during the move? We found some stuff that we were like, we didn't get rid of that. <laughs> like, where was that? We have like a random that random like speaker that's yeah. in our room like i don't know where that came yeah, from I don't. <laughs> you know um i'm trying to uh, we don't really know if we lost anything yet because we have not yeah, we, finished unpacking yeah. so we'll see we'll see yeah but i think that one thing that we've been <laughs> wanting to do for a while is just like you know sell or give away um or scrap a lot of things yeah well and we did some of that especially with some um bigger furniture pieces and some um some tools and stuff that would have been especially hard to move. Mm -hmm. We did that before the move, but there's also a lot of little things that like, um, in an ideal world, I would have liked to go through the whole kitchen and get rid mm -hmm. of all the, you know, any little knickknacks that we don't use or like cups that I don't like yeah. or whatever. Um, but there just wasn't time. <laughs> so we had to like focus our getting rid of stuff efforts on like the physically large items. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that was more bang for our buck. Like I could have yeah. gone through the entire kitchen and, um had less volume than like one of the big pieces and that big piece was just a single decision yeah. so <clears throat> but we just didn't have time so we're gonna do we're gonna like we're, we're gonna try really good to like get the basics set up and then go through everything mm -hmm. before we like put everything away and get settled and don't do it for another eight years yeah yeah i'm kind <laughs> of like in things like the kitchen for example now i'm putting up only the things that i know for sure we're keeping yeah um and anything else is I'm st it's staying on the counter until I make a decision about it. And that's the incentive to make a decision about it. Cause it being on the counter bothers me. <laughs> so, um, so that's not really answering the question. Was there anything else interesting? Really no, I, I didn't. I was just curious if you had found anything. <clears throat> I, I, I think that because we, we go through our house so much and we are kind of aware of what's there mm -hmm. fairly frequently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we found Jube's green mouse. Yeah. 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 It was under, it was under something furniture found a lot of cat hair oh we found a lot of so cat, much hair. cat hair yeah. you guys so much <laughs> um but yeah i don't know if there's a, anything like you know what's again we haven't finished unpacking so we yeah. could also find some really interesting yeah. stuff um <clears throat> uh those the, those the people who are who are uh watching on youtube might might have noticed this but um caitlin and i right now are sitting in dining room chairs because we <laughs> our office chairs are in our office now we can't move them back and forth really easily so both of our butts are at the same height and then because of that like normally i would be lower and caitlin would be higher but since our butts are at the same height yeah this looks hilarious <laughs> i'm not sure if anyone else noticed it before <laughs> i did but like i was <laughs> i noticed it but there was, a, was not too much to do about <laughs> well you set it up so it's set up for evan height and then i come in my head is only halfway up <laughs> so wait, if you if you step out of frame because like with with you here then it at least makes more sense but then with me here i'm just taking up like half the height it's so poorly framed on me <laughs> this is a perfect framing for me who set it up so, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> oh man <clears throat> all right yeah although um, i kind of don't mind the dining chairs i don't know yeah i, I kind of like they're, they're very minimal in terms of like look yeah they don't, you don't really see them too much we don't have to have the green screen flaps yeah no no flaps i don't know something to consider i mean we can't uh, use the dining chairs forever because we need them in the dining room but now, now like are they are they comfortable long term we'll have to do some gaming sessions in them yes yeah yeah soon but 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 <laughs> maybe also like gaming chairs with narrow backs does that exist yeah mm. there, there's one that's pretty expensive 
<laughs> it's like oh, I'll show I'll show it to you. There's there's yeah. We'll we'll do we'll do that later. <laughs> okay, so um we also got asked about tips and tricks for the moving process, right? So I think right? we, so I think we covered that pretty well, you know, as we went. Yeah, I think we've kind of gone. And we also uh, got asked um, if we have any plans for the new house. And I think we covered that too, like the different rooms and what we're going to use them for. Um, yeah. And I think that, that we kind will. Kind of some of our unpacking um, strategies. Yeah. And I think that we will make videos for various rooms in this house as we go. Yeah. yeah. But that'll, that'll be later. Yeah. And we've, we've answered this or we've said this in a couple places, but I'll say it here again. Like, <clears throat> I don't think we're going to do a house tour of this house. Like mm -hmm. the only reason we felt comfortable doing one at our old house was because we were about to move, but mm -hmm. by doing a house tour, you're essentially giving people your floor plan. Yeah. The entire floor it just plan. Doesn't, yeah. it, for <laughs> privacy reasons, it seems not smart, but you guys will see the house in bits and pieces. But if you're like, how come you're not showing off the like new house, the brand new house, I want to <laughs> see it. That's why. Yeah. So, but, but you will see more of it You'll soon. see bits. Yeah, bits. But for now, it's time for Thing of the Week. <laughs> My Thing of the Week is something that I've actually talked about before. Like I, I said mm. that I was gonna get it and I got it and it's great. It's rolling adjustable height workbenches. I really like it. And I think that in general, I, I got like a 48 inch one. Do you wanna say which one you got <clears throat> and where? Uh, it'll be in the link in the description, but okay. it's it's just a uh, adjustable height, <laughs> manual adjustable height rolling workbench uh, with casters and everything. And, and like a butcher block top. <clears throat> butcher block top. And it, it's it's great because... You buy it pre-assembled. Yeah, well, we, we just rolled it into a, a borrowed truck that we were borrowing and um, just drove it back and then set it down and there you go. I mean, it was... We, we've been... So your original plan for it was um, because we want to build new desks for ourselves in the editing office mm -hmm. um because like we were just mentioning we are very different sized people and sharing a desk at the same height isn't the most like ergonomic so we're like okay we'll get one of these rolling workbenches uh, or adjustable height rolling workbenches evan can use it for a bit figure out the height that works best for him then i'll use it for a bit figure out the height that works best for me and then we'll build new desks for ourselves with those heights and then at that point we'll put the rolling table in the garage as an additional work surface, but we've just been using it for so many things. Yeah. Like rolling it around as a work surface as we get the house set up. It's yeah. been super handy. It's so nice to just have a rolling workbench in your home. Is that normal for everyone else? Probably not. <laughs> but it's, it's great for us. Yeah. Um, so my thing of the week is um, we, you know, how you, you'll like put, uh, drawer liners and stuff in mm -hmm. your like kitchen drawers or sometimes bathroom drawers. Um, all of the drawer liners, it's either contact paper, which I don't like doing sticky stuff because it often leaves residue or there's the, um, sometimes there's more of a plasticky one, but that is, can be kind of slippery. And then there's like the grip one and the grip one is what I wanted, but the grippy ones are always like an open weave. And so if you spill something, it's getting through your your desk. And it's hard liner. to clean. And it's hard to clean. I think I think I have a theory. The grippy drawer liners are actually carpet. They're like, like rug. Things. They're like the rug pads. They totally well, are. That was weird. When I you know. got a phone call, like the audio got weird. I know. Did you hear that? My phone. My dad is calling me. Sorry, dad. I'll call you back. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna cancel it. Like it's creating electrical interference in the weird. system. Weird. <laughs> We're overloading the system. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, drawer liners. Yeah. So, so I, I was like, it's going to take a lot of time to cut all these drawer liners, to put them all up. I want to get the right thing. And I wanted something that was grippy, but without holes solid. So Evan was at, was at the store and found a toolbox liner. Mm -hmm. That's for your toolboxes. That was the grippy material. And it was solid. Yeah. We'll put a link, um, but it's, it's the perfect thing for kitchens too, I think. Yeah, and it's like a very similar price. Mm -hmm. And I even compared it online, you know, and like, and it's it's a very similar price. Works great for kitchens and it's solid. It's grippy and it's solid. It's the, so it's the right thing. Stuff. I so, don't know why it's not sold as for kitchens and, and stuff. Yeah, because it was We're using it in the bathrooms too. Yeah, we're using the bathrooms too for yeah. like bathroom drawers because it wasn't in the um, cabinet or drawer liner section. It was in the toolbox, tool yeah. chest, um, like workbench section. Yeah. So we'll put links. 
Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing of the week. But before we head out, uh, I've just been, uh, you know, we, we get emails whenever you guys leave reviews. And I, we've been loving how much y'all have been getting in on the prank. So for those of you guys who haven't heard, we have an ongoing prank. Um, we we, we uh, want someone else to find the Evan and Kaylin podcast. That doesn't not, know us from YouTube. <clears throat> doesn't know us from YouTube and get really confused. So y'all have been writing great reviews to increase the confusion and prank someone random who will eventually find this. But um, we have one from Awushio. This pod titled, This Podcast Saved My Marriage and My Banana Bread Muffins. If you have not listened to this podcast before, you've made it a grave mistake. My neighbor's cat recommended this podcast to me via the cat dimension, and I'm so glad I decided to listen. This podcast shows you the nine keys to happiness, the answer to life, and how to make banana bread muffins. <laughs> Bravo. It's always That's smart really going to take, confuse someone. It's always smart to take recommendations yeah. from your neighbor's cat. Okay, and then we have one titled uh, Visionary from Baby Ma Maggie, or Baby B Maggie. <laughs> If podcasts could be in MoMA, this one would be. <laughs> I now have the knowledge to circumnavigate the globe, develop new species of fruit, and select the best cat. Listen and enchant the world with your new knowledge. Y'all are funny. Thank I like you. it. Thank you. I like it. <laughs> Thank you for furthering our prank and confusing yeah. anyone who happens to randomly stumble upon <laughs> us. Um, and thank you for joining us for the very first podcast in the new house. In the new house. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. Bye.